start with testimony. I know half of you guys here barely know me. Um, my name's Juan Carvalho. I'm a deacon here at the church. Open Bible. Been here since Manny was a conceived, actually. <laughs> He's going to be 13 in December, so yeah, we're going 13 years. It was in, uh, in May. Time flies. But anyways, uh, I'm from a small town in Texas called Eagle Pass. Been on the news lately. Uh, grew up my childhood there. Moved. This is on Johnny. And then um, we finally migrated up north to Quad City area. Lived there about five, six years. I went back home, age 16, tried to change my life. Um, did I change it dramatically? Yes, I did. Um, met Maria down there. She was 16, I was 14. We eloped. And uh, we're still together after almost 20 years. 22 years together, 18 years of marriage. I mean, that's... That's impressive, I think. <laughs> the odds were against us, I'll tell you that. It wasn't easy, but the uh, best thing happened to me when I was 20 years old. Um, got in trouble with the law, with our, where she at? I was like, where my sister-in-law's brothers, my wife's brothers, and uh, it was a nightmare situation, but and it was involving drugs. Um, then it um, happened in Texas. Went there down for vacation. And, um, then came back to Illinois. Um, and then uh, told my wife, you know what, I want a different life. I'm tired of just, I mean, she completes me, Johnny, having a kid. You know, life felt, you know, well, to be honest, I didn't feel it completely yet. Like something was missing. And then uh, we moved to Des Moines. I thought maybe changing scenery would change everything. You know, Des Moines is a, it's a beautiful town. Um, I love, we loved it. It was peaceful. It was a good place to start family. Still is, I think, in my, in my opinion. Um, but what happened down there wasn't over. Um, got a nice, decent job. I was, making 18 bucks an hour. And I was like, whoa, I was 19 years old. I mean, drop out, you know, from high school. And uh, to me, that was a lot of money, <laughs> especially 10, 20 years ago. That's, that's pretty decent salary. Uh, I was working at Firestone, actually. And uh, one day I uh, got off work six in the morning, worked to six to six in the morning. And I parked and I saw uh, two, two big guys coming my direction. I already knew what, who they were. I didn't know them specifically, but I knew who they were after. And uh, you want carbo? I'm like, yes, yes I am. You know why we're here? I'm like, yes, why we're here to arrest you. So I'm like, all right, they arrested me. And he said, um, the title of today's sermon is about fear. So that's where I'm going with this. <laughs> and uh, just to, so you guys get an example of, of uh, wrong and good fear. Fearing the Lord and fearing man, man's fear, you know, emotion, whatever, you know, thunderstorm, you know. Um, so they arrested me. I was like, first thing that came to mind, I was like, my wife, my kids. And uh, it was the worst day, uh, but it led to something really awesome. Um, and I told my aunt, she heard all the commotion that was going outside. <laughs> she came outside and told my aunt, Dia, which means aunt in Spanish. I'm like, Dia, please tell Maria, wake her up calmly and tell her they're, they're resting me. I'm going, I don't know when I'm coming out, I'm coming, I don't know what's going to happen. Um, so she told her and she was, she came out panicking, scared. I'm like, what am I going to do? I'm like, hey, don't worry. Um, just get a job, take care of her son, and See what happens. Uh, we're Catholics, so we, we, we kind of knew God. You know, we, we knew about him, you know. Did we have that close relationship? No. Um, I, just, I just told her I have faith. Have faith in God. And um, 
So I went to Polk County, got transferred to two different places during the morning. I didn't know where I was going. It was, it was scary. <laughs> I was like, what am I doing? Like, don't worry about it. Nobody didn't tell me anything, but that's a, that's a nasty feeling, not knowing what's going to happen or, or where you're going and what, why am I in here for? <laughs> you know, you start talking crazy. But uh, I finally had my court hearing, and the worst thing I could see, uh, Johnny, my wife was there, my mom, Johnny was like two, three years old, I can't remember. And I was walking in to the courtroom with shackles and a green and white suit. I, I was happy to see some, my son, Johnny. Johnny, how you doing? Man, it, was, it was a good feeling seeing family. I'm like, there's only been one night. <laughs> you know, but, but it felt like eternity. And uh, just remember that, eternity. <laughs> it felt like eternity. Um, and he, lo he looked at me and put his head down like he didn't know me. And that was the ugliest feeling. I mean, it broke my heart. And I, didn't, I don't remember what happened during the hearing. Because that was in my mind. Like, what did I do to him? What did I do to my son? What am I doing to my family? If my son feels this way, imagine my siblings, my parents. And uh, the second night, uh, these guys come up to me. And they try to cheer me up because I was pretty down. And it's funny because uh, he was telling me that one of his friends had been there for a while. And uh, he, he said, uh, you believe this? Blah, blah, blah. Oh, he used different words. This guy said, like, what, why is he so depressed? Why is, what's wrong with him? And uh, he said, he responded, well, how were you when we first came in, you idiot? <laughs> and, and I was like, that cheered me up because I was like, I just needed to laugh. I'm like, of course, nobody's happy when they first get in there. You know, so I, just, I thought that was funny. But uh, that, that night, uh, this guy gave me a Bible. And he didn't say a word, he just gave it to me. He's like, here, read it, trust me. I'm like, should I start reading that night? And everything I was opening up was saying, hey, I'll, if you trust in me, I will give you words to speak when needed. And man, did I believe those words? I will get you out in a rut. I just have faith in me. That's all I received. And, you know, I confess in the... the you know, the Lord's Prayer with different churches and stuff. But that night, I definitely said, Lord, I need you. You're my Savior. Get me out of this, and I will serve you with all my heart for the rest of my life. I was 19 years old. The next morning, I woke up. People handed me gifts. Like, here's a comb. Here's some candy. Here's some chips. And uh, I was like, wow. Um... They gave me samples to go shower. They gave me shampoo. I was like, you know, that was like biblical stuff, you know. <laughs> it was already happening. That's how I received it. I was like, they're showering me with gifts. You know, I trust in the Lord. I made a commitment. And you know, look, and I was just a new man. I had showered. I cleaned up. I combed my hair back. I slicked it back like I usually do. And I was just a new man. I was happy. And, and the guy said, hey, who's this guy? Who's the new guy? I'm like, and I... I mean, I was embarrassed because, <laughs> yeah, first night I was crying. I was like, what did I do? But uh, uh, ever since then, I've been serving God. And I do not regret it because you cannot forget your first love. That's why testimonies are so important. You know, so you remember because we're, we're human. You know, we sometimes lose that, that fire. That, that love that we, when we first met the Lord, man, I was hungry for God. And I never want to lose that passion. You know? Yeah. And it's very easy to do. Especially in today's society. In today's world. And, I mean, and that's where I'm going with this pandemic. Um, there's two kinds of fears. You know, there's a fear emotional, then there's a fear of awe for the Lord, right? And the, there's a wrong fear, like do you guys remember last year? How were people just reacting to the situation? 
when there's no toilet paper, bottle waters, food shortage. They were panicking, right? They, were, they had fear, they were scared, right? Or you, you guys don't remember? You know, that's the wrong fear. You can, God knows who produces good fruit and who does not. Who has the right character and who, who has integrity and who doesn't, right? You know, that's why we're always going to need the Lord. Especially now, if I'm afraid if they close the country again, it's going to be worse than before. We can't afford that. You know, so let's, let's take a moment to pray because that, that can happen very easily. You know, and that's the fear that we don't want to put in people because we can't handle crazy. We can't handle fear unless you really, really have faith in the Lord, right? right. we got to have faith in God. You know, we might live in a place where it's nice and peaceful and everything's going well, but eventually it will affect us. You know, it will. You know, like, there's other states are struggling. Our economy is great, I think, compared to other states. Texas, you know, Arkansas, Oklahoma. But if you go to Illinois, it's, a, it's like going to a different country. You know, it's starting, starting to get up there again. But... Again, a fear, we shut it down, it's just going to go backwards, a hundred times worse. So let's take a moment to pray and trust, trust God that he will intervene and we need to allow him to work in our lives. And people that, Lord, I pray for the ones that do not know you, Lord, that they come to you and recognize you. Let your will be done, Father God. Protect this country because this country still loves you, Father. This country will still call upon your name. We will still serve you, Lord. And bless those who bless the government, Lord, that they're led by their emotions, by men, not by God. We pray that they do your will, Father God, not ours. Not their, not their own. Yeah. Let them be a praying senators, praying governors, praying president, Father God, to trust in you. We need to rely on you, Father God. We can't trust doctors, we can't trust science. You created everything, Father God, for a purpose. You created us so we can rely on you, Father God. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Yeah. Amen. So, I'm going to share some scriptures here that where fear has gone wrong. If you guys want to follow me, James chapter 2, 19. They're just examples. I'm not going to paraphrase or anything, but just, just examples of when, when fear has gone wrong. You believe that there's one God. Do you well? Well, even the demons believe and they tremble. Matthew 25, 20, 25. The unprofitable servant was corrected for being wicked and lazy after he made the excuse. I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground instead of using it productively. Again, from fear led to his emotions led him to do something else instead of investing in Revelations. And this is where I think like atheists and, and people that just don't believe say that God is an evil God or he's a bully. 21.8. Even, even Revelations 21 tells us that the cowardly or fearful, fearful will not be in God's kingdom. That's kind of harsh, right? I can see where people would think, God, well, God's evil, God's mean, he's a mean guy. Well, you see, they don't know God. They don't know that he's a loving God. Again, yes, the cowardly and the fearful will not inherit the kingdom of God. Why? Because fearfulness and cowardliness leads to lack of integrity, lack of faith. So lack of faith, lack of integrity, it means you're not, you don't know God. You don't know his love. So of course you're going to think that way. You're going to do things that you're going to regret that lead to not knowing God even further and further. And the more you do that, the more you have bitterness for the Lord. That's what fear, the wrong fear does to people. Amen? I hope I'm making sense here. That's the kind of fear we do not want. Amen? All right, and then there's a good fear, and the only fear that we should have 
is to have respect and reverence for the Lord. Amen? Yeah. All right. Let's go to Thessalonians 2, chapter 3, verse 16. It says here, Now may the Lord of peace himself give you his peace at all times. In every situation, the Lord will be, be with you at all times. So that's why we need to have the knowledge of God, the fear of God, and knowing God. Because his peace transcends all understanding. Amen? Amen. And we're going to need it. Not just for ourselves. We can't be selfish. We need to be selfless and share the good news. That's why I kind of share that testimony. Because when, when I had come to the Lord and made that decision, first thing I was doing when I was out was sharing the good news. How awesome he is. And that what he did for me, he can do for you. And we cannot lose that fire because there's a lot of people out there that don't know God and hate God. You know, but that, that could be so many reasons, you know, because church, there's people that have been church hurt, you know, which is sad. I mean, and I see what they're talking about because sometimes I see some Christians, I'm like, I don't want to go to church, I'm not here, I'm get me wrong. <laughs> um, but there's certain churches that, before I came here, it was like, you're a Christian, you know, but my focus was not in, in them, my focus was in God. See, we're not all that. I'm, I'm not a type of person that, even before the Lord, didn't let emotions guide me. You know, like, just because this so and so, so person's this way, I'm going to stop serving God. And I'm like, you're, you're just looking for an excuse not to serve God. But our, our job is to be attracting to other people to love God. Right. And let's be positive. Let's, let's, uh, we're not, we're not going to be perfect. We're not going to please everyone. That's a guarantee. But at least we're going to do our best, and we know that we love God and we're here to serve Him. You know, because if you can leave one person, that one person will become 15th persons in, in God's kingdom. You know, it's all about believing. And no matter how you look or what you don't have, the power that's in you, that was given to you, to you, is way greater than how you feel by yourself. You have to have confidence in God. You know, because he will transform that person because of those powerful words. Amen. And those words I've used, I'm not an educated man. Like I said, I was a dropout. You know, I, I was not good at school. But ever since the Lord came into my life, he has given me knowledge and wisdom. And recently I noticed how knowledge makes you money. Not just wisdom, but the knowledge of knowing stuff. For example, the, the store that we opened, knowing the product. If you don't know the product, you ain't got to sell nothing. First thing you got to do is understand the product, what you're selling. In the beginning, it was hard. I was like, they were asking me questions I didn't know. Is this, what kind of fiber is this? I'm like, um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but you know what? It didn't discourage me. I kept seeking for answers. And that's what we need to do. We cannot get that discouraged. And keep seeking him because he will give you understanding right. that we cannot comprehend. The only thing we can say is say, God, as all you, right. I'm going to give him all the praise and glory to him. Especially me because I, like, I know where I come from. I ain't better than nobody. But what makes me confident is him. So if I see him cocky, <laughs> it's because of God. <laughs> You know, it's, I just have full confidence in him. I have trust in him. And we all need to be that, be like that. We cannot let this world that we in belittle us, tell us something different. And if you feel that way, maybe we're not praying. Maybe you're not reading the scriptures. The same book that I have tells me I'm a saint. You know, I am made perfect in his image. Do you guys believe that? I mean, I shared with uh, a church member here. My, I mean, I served the Lord in, 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 in jail, but I wasn't going to church for two years because I was stubborn. I was like, I'm a Catholic. You know, I can still have a relationship and be a Catholic. But that wasn't for us at the time. You know, I didn't know that, though. But like I shared with a member here, 
My wife said, if you want to be part of family, you need to be at church with us. And, and that hit my heart. She said other things, like, pretty much she'll beat me. <laughs> and I was like, I don't, I love you guys. I'm not, I'm not going to choose my pride over, over my family. Yeah. You know, but we have to make those choices. And God, if you trust in God and we pray, we will lead you that direction. I'm going to finish off with a uh, couple powerful verses. Philippians uh, chapter 4, verse 4. If you guys want to follow, please do, because um, I took Insta, and Insta made you read Philippians like 10 times. Uh, you guys remember that? <laughs> Whoever took Insta. And, but it's, it's like a 20, 30 minute book that's so powerful. If anyone's familiar with Philippians, I love it. It says here, always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. Let everyone see that you're considerate in all you do. Remember the Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace. That's a scripture I was sharing earlier. Which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ. Right there. That, I love the end right there because his peace will guard your heart and mind. And that's where the devil, he has no power over us Christians. Do you know where he can mess with us? In our mind and with our hearts. And I still don't want to give him praise or glory or power. He doesn't have power with us. But he tries to manipulate us. But we need to be smart and recognize his tactics. Amen? Okay. Let's go back to Philippians chapter 2. Start with verse 1. I even love the, the title here. It says, Have the Attitude of Christ. Most of my, my preaching or sermons have to do with my attitude and mind of Christ. Because, I mean, I, I'm surrounded with a lot of mental illness people. <laughs> so there's so many powerful scriptures for whatever you want to call them, the bipolars or the depressing anxiety. Um, and I can relate to them. <laughs> so... Chapter 1, Philippians says, is there, or actually Paul says, is there any encouragement from, from belonging to Christ? Of course there is, right? Amen. Any comfort from his love? Of course there is. Any fellowship together in spirit? Of course. Are your hearts tender and compassionate? Sometimes. <laughs> but we should be like that every day, amen? Amen. Then make me truly happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other, loving one another, working together with one mind and one purpose. Do not be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble, thinking of others as better than yourself. I'm going to start right there. That's important because don't we see that in today's world? We're with TikTok and Facebook and what's that other one? Instagram. It's all about them. It's all about me, 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 me. Selfish people, right? We live in a society that, or even our schools are teaching them, you know, a different uh, theology that's not from God. Sure. We need to pray for our children. Because if you think it's, they're bad now, I'm pretty sure the older people used to say that about us. You know, and I don't think we're that bad compared to this generation, <laughs> but it can get worse. And if we don't pray for our children, pray for this country. I believe in power of prayer. Yeah. I yeah. believe it. I trust in God. And we need to receive that with our hearts. We have to believe in the power of prayer. That is my next sermon for next week, is the power of prayer. So please be here because we're going to be praying. And it's going to be powerful, not because of me. Because God dwells in us. Because we believe. Who believes in God? Who believes in Jesus Christ? Amen. Yeah. Who believes he's powerful? Yeah. Yeah. 
I do. We all do, right? Amen. Let's give him glory. So let's let me finish again here. Don't look out only for your own interests, but take interest in others too. You must have the same attitude that Christ had. Amen. Amen. This is my first scripture right here. Therefore, God availed him to the place of the highest honor and gave him the name above all other names. I mean, don't you guys get it? Who loves sports? Anybody here raise your hand? Football? I love football with the Cowboys. You like hunting? You love hunting, right? More than sports. What 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 drives that passion to cheer for your team? You know, when you hear the, the fight song, well, do you have that same passion and feeling when you hear? Therefore, God had valued him to the place of the highest honor and gave him a name above all names. Does that encourage you? Does that give you like, mm, yes, Lord, above all names. In that name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Amen. Every knee should bow. In heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue will declare that Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Now, does that story up your heart? Does that scripture, those words, encourage you? Amen? Amen. And they encourage me. They should, they should fire you up and say, you know what? I'm going to start a church. <laughs> Amen. All right. Well, thank you for listening to me today. And I hope you're here next week. Like I said, we're, um, I'll be honest. I'm, I'm learning how to be a preacher and whatnot. But I'm a good testimony of, like, I'm not afraid. I'm not going to let fear stop me from doing God's work. Because that's, that's my weakness is caring about what people think or how I preach. But I say, devil, no. I'm going to spread your word. I made a commitment. I made a promise. I'm sticking to it. And I encourage you. You guys have the same attitude going forth. You know, look at my testimony. You know, I'm a, I never thought public speaking would be a... I uh important thing in high school. I <laughs> dropped out of there. I was like, I don't want it. <laughs> well, one thing I got was like, make sure when you go in there and you shake hands and look in the eyes. That's all I remember. <laughs> First week that I was there, but but anyways, enough about me. Let's give glory to God. We, we got music going on? Yeah, we got song. Okay. Let's put prayer really quick. Thank you, Father God, for this message. Uh hopefully it got through and Lord, I just keep asking, keep working in my life, working in people's life, in this open Bible fellowship too. We pray for the pastors, uh, protect them. I, I'm pretty sure they home safely. He needs a nice, joyful, peaceful time with his family, Lord. Uh, bless his week. Uh, we all need a good vacation too. Hopefully uh, we get to enjoy that too. too. Uh, we just thank you, Father God, and we're always going to give you praise and glory to the highest name of all names. In Jesus Christ, we love you, God. Amen. Amen.